It's the Word of Life. The Word of Life with Reverend Mitzi Gibson is made possible in part by Grace Christian Center, Killeen Auto Brokers, and Realtor Nicole Torres. Welcome to the World of Life. Well, once more, Mixie Gibson with you. And I know that we are going to have a good teaching today because the Holy Spirit is in tap. He is the teacher and he is doing everything that he has to do. In my favor, my voice will be clear and everything is going to be fine because the Word of God make everything to be the, according to God's principle. And he is with me and he's going to help me in everything that I need. As I, we've been praying, not only we've been teaching about faith. Faith is something that we need to grow into. With the, the faith of God that has deposited in us, we need to develop. We need to grow in that faith because faith is what takes us to the victory to have answered our prayers. Every time that we pray and we have faith, that prayer answer is coming quickly. Quickly, God is in God perfect timing, but quickly because he said faith is what moves him. So we need to make sure that every time that we pray or we have any conversation and something that you would like to have or something that you would like to obtain, uh, it will be but faith. Everything has to be by faith. By faith, we receive Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It was by faith. I, I didn't see him. You didn't see him. But it was faith, say, yes, I receive Jesus as Lord and my Savior. So if we had that faith to receive Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, who had redeemed from the course of the laws, sin, iniquity, and transgression, and then and we feel comfortable and we feel happy because we know that we're not going to go to hell, but we're going to be, be with Jesus in heaven. The same faith that you had to receive Jesus Christ, or you did have, is the same faith that we need every day, every moment, every moment. We don't see it what we ask it, but it will be, we will receive it. We will receive it. In, a book, in the book of Isaiah, I'm going to repeat once more what the Lord has said to me to, to, to tell you. In the book of Isaiah 55, it says, in verse 8, remember that the last, the last time, the last teaching, I was reading these verses. For my, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Say the Lord, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heavens and return no there again, but water the earth and make the bring forth as, and sprout that it might give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word, say the Lord, that goes out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void without producing any effect useless, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing which I send it. We are speaking the word of God. And he said those, those are his words. And that's the word that he wants us to have faith. Because he said very clearly, he knows our ways, but our ways not higher as his way. We sometimes pray something that we think that is according to God's perfect will. But to make sure that you are in the will of God and that his word, his word, because the word that you have to be speaking is has to be his word that is in the Bible. So yes, always make sure that you have the assurance that the verse that you have is the one that connects you with a prayer that you have desire. It has to be something that is proof. And if you don't have the verse, and, but you know how to uh, speak the word and, and you have memorized it, it's the same name. As long as that is the word of God that you're speaking, no matter if you read it, no matter if you, no matter if you speak, but has to be his word. It does not have to be your word, your own desire, your own uh, pleasure, no. Because you don't die for you. 
Jesus died for us, and he has given us the book of the Bible to obtain every word that is written in here as a prophecy for us. As we speak the word of God, we are prophesying what he told us that he will do for us. And as we prophesy the word of God, he say that we will not return to his voice. He receive what we're speaking because it's his word. And because it's his word that I'm speaking right now, he is going to please you that watching this program and to please me because I'm obedient at teaching you how to obtain faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the word of God is what gives us all the privilege to obtain blessings upon blessings upon blessings. Because it is his power. The word of God is light. The word of God is life. Every word that we speak is life. So every time that you speak the word of God, you are prophesying what he said in his book for us to remember that that is for us. That is a gift. Every word that God has given now in the Bible is a gift for us. And if we are intelligent and smart to follow his, his uh, uh, teaching, we will be more content than lonely or depressed or frustrated when we don't see what we want because we're speaking the wrong word or we're not speaking with faith and we don't say what the Bible say. We have to make sure. In the book, now I know that God has everything in order. Everything in order. So I'm going to read now in the book of uh, Romans. In the book of Romans, I'm going to be speaking. Chapter 4. I like this verse that I just read a few minutes ago because that um, encouraged me. Because I know that I'm reading his word. I know that I'm telling him this is what you say. This is what you told me to pray, to pray for or, or read. So I, I, feel, I feel happy because I know that he is with me, not against me. And he wants us to be happy. You are a father, you are a mother. Don't you want your children to be always content? We are children of the Most High God. He wants us to be content. That's the reason that he sent his son. So we will be safe and be part of his kingdom. He is our father. We have not now become his daughter and his sons for those who are receiving the word of God, male. So we know that everything that it is here, it is a gift. A gift for you and a gift for me. Every word is a gift. It's something that God wants us to have. And we receive it because he will going to make sure that he will perform it. In Jesus' glorious name. So in the, in the book of Romans uh, chapter 4, thank you, Jesus. Verse 16 and 24, I'm going to be reading. And it said, Therefore, inheriting the promises is the outcome of faith. Is the outcome of faith. Inheriting the promise of God is the outcome of faith. Order that it might be given as an act of grace. God unmerited favor to make established and valid. And God attended to all his descendants. That is us, the children of Abraham. He promised to Abraham that he will take care of his descendants. We are his descendants. And I love what he said over here. Faith. Depend. Everything that we want depends on our faith. It's in the chapter 4, verse 16. If you have a piece of paper or pencil, write that so you can remember that when you want something, you have to have that faith that is said here in the world. In order that it might be given us an act of grace, we pray in faith and the grace of God, who merited favor, is going to bless us by giving us the answer of prayer. We have faith and grace working together. The Spirit of God, Jesus Christ himself, the Lord himself. I mean, the three Holy, 
you know, we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I, I see that, and it called my attention because I was reading and I was in, uh, reviewing, and when I was reading, I say, wow, inheriting, inheriting the promise. He want us to inherit the promise that is in the Bible and that he promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He want us to be happy. He want us to rejoice. So he said that promise is the outcome of faith. You have to have faith and depend entirely on faith, nothing more than on faith. No, don't say, I hope that I will get it. Maybe I will, will get it. Maybe he will say yes. Or maybe, well, I don't know. No, that is negative. That is not faith. That is doubt and disbelief. And God hates disbelief and doubt because he's a God of truth. He speaks the truth, nothing more than the truth. So we have to remember that faith is nothing more than the, the what, he has put the faith inside of us. We have the faith inside of us. We just have to develop. Every time that you speak correctly the word of God by faith, you're increasing in faith. Because when you ask and, and read in what, or if you remember what you're going to say that is according to the word of God, you don't have to read because you cannot carry your Bible all the time with you. But if you are speaking or more or less parallel to what he is saying to you, you know, that is a faith. That's faith. You will be a genie, and everybody will be a genie, and people are doing it, that they memorize every, every verse very good. But I have to read, and I have to paraphrase the way that he said to me. I put it exactly the way he want, but I also know how to say it, because I know that I have not the Bible in front of me, but I know the meaning of what I want and the meaning of what he says. As long as we are together, and what he said, and the minute, everything, we know, and then, that God hears our prayers, and God is going to answer our prayers. So continue to say, thank you, Father. God is so good. I like this verse. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Therefore, in, inheriting, inheriting, I like that. Inheriting the promises. Inheriting the promises. Is the outcome of faith. Once you obtain, inherited the word of God, faith come forth. And what is faith? Answer your prayer. In order that you might be given exactly what you ask, in order that not only you receive it by faith, but grace together. That's what I like, grace and faith working together. That is the most beautiful thing that I can, I can tell myself. Remember me, say, grace, you, you've been saved by grace. And you did it because you have faith. So this is very value. Compare faith and grace. By faith, you confess Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. And by grace, the grace of God, he grants you the, the, the gift to receive Jesus, the Son, as a, your Lord and Savior and Redeemer and deliver from darkness, sin, iniquity, and transgression. Isn't that beautiful? It's good. I love it. I continue to say, all is descendant. He's talking about us, the descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not only to the devout and inheriting the law by the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham who is thus the father of us all. The faith, remember that Abraham has such a strong faith. He has a faith, my God. <laughs> Every time that I, you know, I was in a situation that I needed to have faith because when the situation is ugly, I mean, and your mind is filled like a, that you, you know, you don't say it because I didn't say it, but I said, my God, this, this really has to help me. I had to stand in the world because I need, I need, and I keep telling, remember, Father, I speak your word, and you promise that you're going to help, not only you're going to help, but you promise to my for Father Abraham that you will take care of me. I'm a descendant. I am descendant of Abraham. God is a God of faithfulness. He don't lie. He said that to Abraham, and he keep his promises. 
And I'm telling you, I have so much answer to prayer because I stand in the beginning and just kind of, I'm going to confess it by faith, confess it, confess it, confess it, confess it, these verses, confess it, to finally I believe that I'm beginning to arise in me, beginning to arise in me. I can confess it, I can read it the first time and can continue to read it the second time. And I say, help me, Father, I want to obtain it, to come inside of me. I want that faith that is in me arise where you were. And I repeat it on, on and on and on. And the more I begin to repeat it, I begin to feel so good because the Holy Spirit beginning to work in me, showing me that I have faith and I want to grow in the Word of God as uh, He promised me through my father Abraham. And I tell you, even if it was not a promise to Abraham, it's a promise to Jesus Christ that He will deliver us from all evil. Jesus said that I will deliver us. Moment by moment by moment, said Jesus, I will deliver you from evil. So we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the promise of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, <laughs> and the Holy Spirit with us, living among his holiness in our hearts. You know, the Bible is the most beautiful book that I ever read because it brings me life, energizes me. The Word of God energizes me. I don't know if that, you know, that. He does the same thing to you. But I know that I can be a little bit depressed for something that happened and I need to come out of that depression or, or that way that I feel. I begin to speak or sing a song that, that put me together with him to, to lift my, my, my spirit, to lift my faith up. It, it, is, it is beautiful. In verse 70 says, as it is written, I have made you, I'm talking about Abraham, it is written, I have made you father of many nations. And he was appointed our father, my father, your father. In the sight of God, in the sight of God, he became my father, your father, in whom he believed. Why? Because Abraham believed. Abraham believed. I believed. How long it took me to believe? I don't care how long it's going to take me, but I'm not going to give in. I'm going to be repeating it, repeating it, that, that whatever I want, you promised me divine health. You promised me that I will be freed from coughing and congestion and all the things. I confess that. You promised. And I am the daughter of Abraham. And I don't want to be sick. I want to spread the word. I have to talk to the people in the, the television, wherever I go. Because this is, uh, this is not a one-time ministry. This is 24 hours ministry. So I need to be strong in my voice. I need to be strong in my body. And I need to have strong faith. Faith. I'm telling you, I'm praying for my children that they grow in faith. It takes time, but it's worth it. It takes time to grow in faith, but it's worth it. Because you see that like that, the answer to prayer. Once you got it, you know that you know that you know, and God know that you know that you know now, the answer to prayers show up. It might take, you know, God is in charge. Sometimes it could be months or three months or two, one day, 24 hours, but you know what? God knows exactly when you need the answer. We want the answer, but it has to be in God's perfect timing. Because he knows through the answer of prayer that we're asking if it's going to be a benefit to us right away or we're going to, or, or we're going to destroy what he's giving us in different way. So God, God knows us better than we know ourselves. So he wants to make sure that once he gives you the answer of prayer, it's going to be forever for good. Uh, uh, answer of prayer for good. And continue to say, who gives light. He, he said, he was appointed, Abraham was appointed father in the sight of God, in whom he, Abraham, believed in God, who gave life to the dead. Can you see that? He gave life to the dead, 
and I speak the, the, the non-existent thing that he has for a toll, or my Father God has said to us in the book, speaking the thing that God promised. This is a promise that he gave it to Abraham. So when I want something, I say, I'm going to stand here in the name of Jesus, my Savior. I'm going to stand here in the blood of Jesus who saved me. I'm going to stand here with the blood of Jesus who said, okay, I'm not beginning to destroy my, my, my time in prayer, my time without reading nothing. I, I made sure that I, I'm beginning to clear, beginning to clear the atmosphere. So, he said, and I speak of the no existing thing that he has foretold and promises as if they are already exist. Abraham was speaking the word as I already exist. I speak the word as it already exists because that's my faith. And so if when I feel like a it's a faith that I need to, uh, because every, every situation, every, every problem, every, everything that you need is different. So one is easy faith, the other one you have to really fight in faith. I mean, fight and fight and fight and fight and fight. And even if you don't see it, it spiritually is taking place. We don't see it in the natural, but if we only can pick in the spirit run and see that he is listening and the situation that we ask is getting ready to come out. But you know, we have to trust God. We have to trust God. For Abraham, human reason, for <laughs> this, is, this is something that I really <laughs> said, Father, remember the least that once it was Abraham was reasoning to himself. Well, sometimes I reason with myself too. But you, that don't, I don't say, I'm, I have faith. I'm reasoning myself, but I have faith because I like to put things in my brain, <laughs> you know. And I say, <laughs> Abraham reasoning to you, with you. <laughs> I reason with God sometimes and say, help me. Help me because I know that it's true what you're saying, but I need you to really push me more in my faith. Give me a little push because I need it. Verse 18, for Abraham, human reason, for a hope being gone, his hope was gone. <laughs> Remember that his hope was uh, to have a baby. <laughs> and he, he, he said, and he was 90, he said his hope was gone. I mean, I would like to see who is the man in this earth, uh, 90 years old, and oh, and uh, get his wife pregnant. I only get to see that we have a hand because there was a promises. <clears throat> but he said, you see, Abraham, now that he was old, he said, wow, how is he going to do this? But I'm going to believe. Sometimes when he was doubting again, he said, oh, he said it. He said it. He had saved me in different this occasion. That's what we need to do. See what he had done for you before and then put it together that you increase more and more and more. How many things he had done for you? So you remind, remind God, you did this for me, and, you, and thank you, you did this, this, and this, and this, so I thank you. So I know that this is kind of right now for me, very hard to really absorb it, but I need your help. Because the same way you did it, the rest of the old ones that are behind, you can do one more. You can do one more. And that's what Abraham was hoping, that said, in faith, that he should become the father of many nations. That's what God told him. You're going to be the father of many nations. And he was thinking, how is this going to take place? Remember the verse that we read in Isaiah? My thought that you thought? I'm away, and now you wait. Abraham, he was repeating himself. My way is not your way. You say, my way is not your way. You know, so he was encouraging himself even when he was, his hope was failing. I ask God that some things that sometimes I feel like my hope, Father help me. My hope is one to vanish. No, I don't want to let my faith go. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Because you promised me this situation that I'm praying for, and I will not stop till you bring it back 
to pass. I will not. I might lose a little bit of hope for a moment, but I push myself back. I said, no, Mixie Gibson, you believe in God. The same way that you try to teach other people, you have to teach yourself. I'm telling you, before I teach faith, I went through a lot of things to finally got it. Finally. And now that's the reason that I want to speak and teach by faith, because I know that it's real, and I know that it will come to pass. I know. I grow with that faith. And you know what? Even that I grew with that faith, I want to continue to grow more and more and more, because I don't know what the next time I'm going to have a big pro situation or problem. And I need a strong faith for anything, for everything. I need strong faith. I know that you're watching this program, and I know that what I speak to you, you're absorbing it. But my time is coming close, and I want to invite you to get, if you have not received salvation, you have not received Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, <coughs> pray this prayer with me. Holy Father, I thank you for sending your son to die for me. I thank you, Father God, that I receive Jesus Christ, the Lord, my Savior. And I thank you for his blood that cleansed me, sanctified me, and made me holy and forgive my iniquities. And I thank you for now I believe that I am a son or daughter of God. If you receive this, you read the prayer or pray this prayer for the first time, and then you have received Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, you are a child of God. And if it was the second time or third time that you repeat it, doesn't matter. The more that we repeat it, the better it is. So call me if you have any prayer request. You see the telephone in the screen. And be blessed to the next time that we continue with this teaching that is so phenomenal. It is acted and it's one for me. God bless you. The Word of Life with River Mitzi Gibson is made possible in part by Grace Christian Center, Killing Auto Brokers, and realtor Nicole Torres.